Hello, I come to you with a very special message and it's titled The Great Fraud Around the Israel Hamas War. This fraud is being perpetrated by Arab leaders, the West liberal leaders, and of course, the United Nations. We're going to start by talking about the origin of this war. It would amaze you to realize that the Israel Hamas war is actually a fallout from the war in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine. As of September 2023, the mobs in Europe and America had, were beginning, had turned against the West's participation, sponsorship, and funding of the war against Russia by Ukraine. Even the American Senate, it had become a boiling point and uh, it became a great concern to the liberal leadership of the West. So a situation had to be created to divert the attention of the mob from this war so that they could continue to sponsor that war in Ukraine. The Arab, the, the Ham Israel Hamas war had to be activated because that's the only thing that could muster enough passion, very suddenly too, to turn the people's passion away from Ukraine. So Iran was recruited and Hamas activated on October 7, 2023, Hamas went to Israel and in the, in the most brutal and gruesome way, killed, butchered over 1,200 Israeli citizens within three or four hours, raped women and girl children on the streets of Israel, burnt whole families with children in their homes, and of course, took several hundreds hostage. You'll be shocked and amazed to realize they actually videoed this to entertain their demented supporters back home and all over the world. Of course, Israel, like they expected, declared war on Hamas. Before I continue, I want to tell you that within a short time of Israel declaring this war, the objective for this manipulative action was achieved and fulfilled. The mob's attention moved away completely from Ukraine and focused entirely on the Israel-Hamas war, giving the West's liberal leaders the freedom to go ahead to send weapons and spend billions of dollars on the war in Ukraine against Russia. The problem with the war between Israel and Hamas, of course, became that the West's expectations were not realistic. The West had expected that once Israel declared war on Hamas, they would be able to convince Israel to stop and not topple Hamas from authority. It is my conviction that just as Hamas leaders are making billions of dollars from the so-called aid from the West to the Palestinians which are routed through Hamas, the leader is some corrupt and compromised leaders in the West. Liberal leaders are also lining their pockets with billions of dollars from this deal. This, in my opinion, explains the desperation to keep Hamas in power over the years. And I also believe that it is possible that Iran and Hamas may be blackmailing liberal leaders across Western Europe and America, which is why they really don't know how else to handle this war, the crisis between Israel and Hamas at this point. Israel's, host, Israel's objectives for this war is to free their hostages, number one, and two, to destroy Hamas, meaning to destroy her capability, military capabilities, and her ability to retain power over Gaza. This hasn't gone down well, very well with Western leaders who want Hamas in power because Hamas is the golden goose that lays the golden eggs. Very, and of course, when this Israel wasn't going to be persuaded, or threatened or compelled to stop her attacks, the West liberal leaders actually declared war, a silent war against Israel. The, the deep state, which is a liberal controlled instrument of the West, swung into action to stop Israel at all costs. The first thing they did was to unleash liberal mobs on the streets of Western Europe and America, chanting ceasefires and protesting against Israel, demonizing Israel at all costs. The deep state has proved, previously proved her ability to mobilize these mobs and put them in the street against Donald Trump when they wanted him out of office. They kept these mobs on the streets for years. It's happening again in France. Le Pen just defeated Macron in an election in the European Union. 
The next day, Libra mobs were on the streets, attacking people, attacking businesses and homes, burning French flags, homes of people who they suspect voted for Le Pen. When this failed to stop Israel, the mainstream media, of course, was unleashed. The mainstream media is the, the, the most dangerous weapon under liberal deep state, under control of the control of the liberal deep state. The intention is to, by all means, demonize Israel. So in spite of Israel being attacked on October 7th, Israel is the aggressor, Hamas is the victim. Suffice it to mention here that from October 70 date, over 20,000 missiles have been fired into Israel by Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis. Yet Israel is the victim, is the, is the aggressor, and Hamas is the victim. Apparently, the mainstream media is saying that Israel should not defend herself. She should fold her hands and be destroyed. Hamas, dock tunnels, under schools, civilian schools, civilian hospitals, children playgrounds, and, 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 and civilian homes. When Israel attacked these places, civilians got killed. Israel got blamed for killing civilians. Why Hamas? That is that that made it a strategy to put civilians between as 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 human shields, human sacrifices got away as the victim. As a matter of fact, I believe that the mainstream media has gone unhinged and have brought me journalism to its lowest in generations. And um, it, it, it's, it's really a pain to see CNN reporters actually participated in the, participating in the conflict between Israel and Hamas. I'm feeling the most pain at every victory that Israel achieves in the battlefield. The ICC rage, of course, was activated also by the deep state. The, 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 the desperation to get Africa involved in their rage against Israel led them to South Africa, where corrupt politi South African politicians accepted the mission and went to court against Israel at ICC under, based on false figures supplied by Hamas and under false premises. The general, genocide case against Israel is indeed a terrible and funny one, just as the apartheid case against Israel is, is indeed strange and, and disheartening that these South African leaders no longer know what appetite looked like, the dragon that it was. They have clearly lost touch with reality. With respect to the generalized case, the genocide case against Israel, the ratio of deaths of combatants to civilians in Gaza is one to one. No nation has ever been able to achieve this. The Israeli, Israel actually drops flyers on buildings or locations, civilian locations to be bombed, warning these locations, civilians to vacate that place, they are going to get bombed. Then they call their phone numbers and tell them to vacate. We're going to bomb these places. Then finally they knocked on their roofs before the bombs came. Hamas stopped the civilians from vacating these locations so that their body, dead body counts could be used against Israel for propaganda. The extermination case against Israel is indeed strange, to say the least, given the extent to which Israel goes to save civilian lives in Gaza and the West Bank in the course of this war. Israel actually provides safe zones and, and, and allows civilians time to move to those areas and lets in food, supplies food to these people. The, 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 the accusation that Israel is using starvation as an instrument of war is indeed funny because Israel lets in food but Hamas seizes the food and sells them in the markets. Reports have it that Hamas have made over 500 million dollars US since this war started from sale of aid supplied to civilians in Gaza. Destruction of physical structures in, in Gaza and in the West Bank, of course, are a result of Hamas using civilian structures, building tunnels, using hospitals, schools as military bases, building tunnels underneath these places. The Karim Khan of ICC is a disgrace to the legal profession and should actually be this bad. Hezbollah fraud is the worst fraud in this war. So Islamists have gotten the West into such a corner that the West has accepted that non-government players can be armed and be attacking nations from their home countries, yet their home governments and the home armed forces will not bear any responsibility. So Hezbollah can attack Israel from Lebanon and Lebanese governments and Lebanese armed forces can claim unaccountable. This is fraud and must stop. 
Israel should use every force in her arsenal to stop these attacks from Lebanon and hold Lebanese government accountable for every attack against Israel from that place. If Israel does not stop Hamas and Hezbollah now, the next October 7 might actually become the last of Israel. I want to say, I want to say before I continue that, like I said before, the activation of the Israel-Hamas war completely achieved its objectives within just a couple of weeks. The liberal mobs across Western Europe and United States quickly swung their attention from Ukraine to this war, giving liberal leaders in Western Europe and America the freedom to continue to fund the war against Russia. Meanwhile, now, desperately seeking to save Hamas, the golden goose that lays the golden eggs. I want to talk about United Nations agencies. United Nations is now run by the deep state, the liberal control, deep active state, and Islamists. The United Nations no longer speaks for humanity and no longer represents humanity. UMRA, a UN agency that runs schools in Gaza and the West Bank, actually teach children, Palestinian children, that the Palestinian state can only exist with the destruction of Israel, the state of Israel. They teach them with maps that don't have the state of Israel on them. UMRA members participated in the October 7 attack on Israel. UMRA staff on social media are very actively declaring their willingness and uh, to this determination to destroy Israel. The Commonwealth of Israel is a global organization that I'm propagating, we are propagating, we are advocating to the world. It's a platform where Christian leaders, Christian countries, Christian organizations, and peace-loving peace -loving, um, countries, and, and also lovers of Israel can come together and chat another cause for humanity, for this planet, with peace and justice, prosperity in everyone's mind which is quite achievable. Our mandate, actually, is to bring justice and prosperity to every home, every nation, and every man. I can actually want to emphasize this mandate to you by giving you an insight into the mandate, the justice mandate that God gave Jesus Christ, which came down here, for his, which is his mission down here. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 to 4, New Living Translation declares, if you look at my servant whom I, whom I strengthened, he will, he's my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wrong. He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands belong beyond the sea will await his instructions. This is the mandate that God gave Jesus Christ. This is the mandate that Jesus has given every Christian because he declares, as my father has sent me, he says, so have I sent you. This is our mandate to do justice on earth, to deliver the captives, to free the, 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 the oppressed, and of course, to cater for the poor and for the weak. Finally, I want to tell you, if you're a Christian and you're a peace-loving man, woman, boy and girl on this earth, stop being a part of the silent majority. Atheists, criminals, satanists, they are making their voices heard and they are reshaping the world and leading her to destruction. It is our duty and our mandate to stop this and redirect the earth to on the course that God has set for it. What course is this? Righteousness and justice. So we must pick up and stop being a part of the silent majority. Jesus never wanted to be a part of any silent majority. When he got to the temple and he saw that the temple had been turned into a market, he didn't keep quiet like most other Jews who hated it and who saw it kept quiet. The silent majority. He went and got a cane and actually caned them and chased them out of the temple. He said to them, my father's house should be called a house of prayer and not a den of thieves. This is what we should be doing. Stop being a part of the silent majority. If you're listening to me and you're not born again and, and you want to be a part of this great move of God, these end times, I implore you, give your life to Jesus Christ. And if you want to, repeat after me saying aloud, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of the living God. You came from heaven to the earth and the flesh. You suffered. You were crucified on the cross of Calvary. You died and you were buried. On the third day, you resurrected for my salvation. Thank you, Lord, for I'm born again. I pray for you now. If you said this prayer, I love you so much. You are welcome to Zion. I pray for you now. Lord, I bless these ones with your grace. I bless them with your anointing. 
They are pillars in your house. They grow in bounds in the knowledge of thee. In the name of Jesus. You said to me, stretch out your hands. You heal the sick. Perform notable miracles and even raise the dead. If you're watching me and you require any of these in your body, your family, your business, your nations, take it in Jesus' name. You are blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.